In my previous video, I have shown you exactly how I leveraged Gemini 3 to create a complete voice AI demo from a single line of text to a fully functional and ready-made website that you can actually talk to. We've generated the complete layout, including a demo for a front desk and a dispatcher that really works out of the box without you using any external voice AI orchestration layers. This is the first time in history that we witnessed something like this. And the best part is you don't need to have any technical knowledge, so no coding knowledge or no technical expertise, and you can get this out of the box incredibly quickly. This is going to be a game changer for everyone that wants to enter the voice AI space and show these possibilities to your clients. In fact, the video was so popular that I got tons of comments about it, how I actually made it, and a couple of other questions and some concerns that I want to address in this video. I'm going to give you a complete walkthrough, a step-by-step -step guide from end to end on how we start researching a specific client that we want to build one of those voice AI solutions for, how I would hyper-personalize it, something I haven't done in my previous video, how we we really enrich it with the leads information and make sure we can showcase something that gives them this massive wow feeling like we spent hours on creating it and like that's not already great enough i'm providing you all of those resources including these apps that you can deploy on your own gemini 3 or google ai studio completely for free in the resources below this video so if you're keen to check it out you can always download them in the link in the description and follow me along on the screen now on a last note for everyone that's really interested into voice ai i highly recommend joining our community as well which by the way is also free both of the links are below in the description. Now that said, let's dive right into it. We are going to create a similar page, but in this case for a specific lead. Now I've already taken a second and opened a new tab where I search for plumbers in Boston, which is what we're going to target. So we stay in the realms of plumbers for this example, because we already worked with it prior. And now we just want to find a plumber that has a website with a potential phone number that we can potentially market these solutions to. So if I just scroll through here, we can A, just use the Google map links, right? They usually have a website linked here, but uh, let me just see if someone has a branded domain, a good branded domain. Budget plumbing might be a cool one, or let's see a Boston plumber. Let's see which one looks more outdated or um, standard. Honestly, I, I don't like this one too much. This one looks at least a little better. They have some more branding, so they have some actual colors, which is cool because we can recreate it with AI, which is going to be really awesome. So let's just take these ones, Boston budget plumbing. And what we're gonna do now is we want to recreate a website in a similar style using Gemini while having a full voice AI system implemented that we can just showcase to them. So what I'm gonna do is obviously leverage AI to do that because I'm lazy and I don't wanna extract all the information from that website myself. So I'm simply copying the domain and I'm gonna head over to ChatGPT. And once here, I'm just gonna instruct it to export or extract information from that website. And I'm doing so in the following way. Take the following website URL and extract the brand name, including the services they offer and any kind of contact information so anything that's relevant to the business, including their color profile and layout and style, so I can recreate the branding later down the line. Make sure it's concise and not too long and return it in markdown code. So that is a very simple prompt and I'm gonna drop in the URL here. And now I just wait for ChatGPT to go off, search the web, basically fetch the information from that website and return it to me in markdown code, as you can see here. So I'm just gonna quickly scan that so we have the services offered, the contact information 0012 must be their phone number and that is correct. Cool, so it actually got it. We have even the hero headers. What is primary deep navy? Let me see if that's correct. That's true. Accent is vibrant red and neutral white backgrounds. Okay, that's definitely not a vibrant red. So what I'm gonna do is I'll just make a screenshot of the website and send that in to OpenAI as well. Make sure to adjust the brand style section based on the following website image, which is the actual website because I can see the accent color isn't correct. Also make sure to not inflate the prompt that you returned because I wanna make sure it actually just returns that one information and you can see I'm dropping in the website image and I'm just gonna hit that off. So it should basically now just adjust this brand style section slightly to make sure we represent the actual colors. And once that's done, we can basically head over to Gemini and start creating the actual prompt for generating this demo. And here we go, it basically generated it. Let me see what it says. Accent colors, lighter blue shades and soft orange gradients. Okay, cool. So that seems to work well. Uh, deep navy blue, bright orange, clean white. Cool, that works too. So I'm gonna copy this whole thing and now let's head over to Gemini because now it's time to create our web app, including the voice agents. And for that, we're gonna generate a very simple prompt. Now you can be very creative with this and obviously more specific, but I'm gonna keep it simple because I believe it doesn't matter as much if we just wanna showcase the demo. Create a one-pager app for a plumber based on the given brand information below. Also make sure to include two voice AI agents, one as a front desk and one as an emergency dispatcher and make sure they're available in the above the fold section. 
them. So what I tell it there is to basically create two voice AI agents, one as a front desk, like I said, and one as an emergency dispatcher, because that's what the number is mainly for, and make sure we add this into the above the fold section. And if you don't know what the above the fold section is, it's literally just the first visible part on a website. So whenever you click on a website, you load it, the first part that's visible is the above the fold section. So that said, we have it here. So let's literally just say brand information, and I'm gonna drop in the brand information right here. And that's pretty much it. I think honestly, we can already kick this off. So let's just build that. And when you hit build, it's basically generating the whole website for you. And you can monitor that here on the left side as well, because this is the prompt we have. And you can see at the bottom, Gemini 3 Pro is thinking right now and starting to make a plan and then starting to generate the website content. Now, once more, you don't need to be technical and you don't need to understand code. But if you're curious to see what happens behind the scenes, you can click here on code and see the actual files it's trying to generate. And once it starts, you will also see that it starts filling the index.tsx, which is the first file it creates and here we go now it starts generating the html file and you can literally just follow that in real time and all of that generation usually takes anywhere from around 130 seconds up to maybe 500 seconds until you have the complete website ready so bear, keep that in mind and you may also see a few errors in here which is what gemini fixes itself because with development in general you often see errors so ai is already pretty decent fixing them so you never need to touch them so while it's generating that i want to address one question that was really often asked in the comments below do i actually expose the gemini api key when i host this solution yes and no, it depends. It depends on how you host it. So for anyone that is not interested in this question, you can skip this section. We have a chapter below this video, so you can just head over to the next part. But for anyone who's interested in the security part, listen carefully. If you leverage Google's infrastructure on deploying the website that you create on the cloud, you do not need to worry about the Gemini API key being exposed because Google does something really smart. They use a proxy in front of that web app so that it talks with the backend, which is where your actual Gemini API key he lives so you talk via a temporary session token between the front end that Gemini is creating here and the actual backend. So you will see that as well when we deploy the app there's a proxy going on in the network tab which is exchanging that information. So when you host it on Google it's pretty much safe out of the box. You don't need to worry about any of those security concerns of you exposing your Gemini API key which is being obviously used for the voice AI itself. Now it is different if you are deploying the code on GitHub or you're downloading it as a actual file because in this case you define it inside of your .env variable, so your environment variables, which means that when you deploy it as a front-end app, it's going to be visible inside of your source code. In this case, you got to be really careful because hosting that on an external server will definitely expose your Gemini API key. In these scenarios, what you need to do is you need to host a separate backend where you can handle this API key and make sure that streaming runs from there to your front end. So there's a lot more logic that needs to go into that. So it definitely takes you a lot more time. And I do not believe that for the use case we are trying to use it for. So creating those quick demos, it is worth it for you to go into it. So I recommend launching that on the Google Cloud because it's much more efficient. And to be honest, it's also not really expensive. Now it finally finished and you can see it also started fixing some errors. And now we can also see a preview here on the right. So I need to click on allow to allow the microphone because we obviously have voice agents and tada, we have an actual website. So uh, let me just put this in full screen so we can actually observe it. And you can see it has the colors of that initial brand. And it's even called Boston Budget, Boston Budget Plumbing and HVAC. If we go to the website, we have Boston Budget Plumbing, Heating and Cooling. Okay, it's a little bit different on that side. We treat your home like it's your own. Let's see if it took over any of that kind. Uh, not here, but it basically generated similar similar things. We have the same phone number, which is pretty cool. And you can see that this is also linked to the phone number itself. Obviously, you could adjust it for a demo, but in my case, I would say this is really, really decent. Having an actual cool website that they can see, including the voice AI agents that we actually wanted. And you can obviously talk to them. Hey, Sarah, I have a few questions about your services. Can you tell me a bit more about it? Certainly. Boston Budget Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling offers a range of services, okay, apart including from the voice, plumbing. Actually, pretty good. I even like this little heart there on the on the call section, which is really cool. But you can see we can talk to it. So now I obviously would need to switch the languages around and make sure that obviously Sarah is a female and Mike is a male version. And I can probably do that in the code. And to be fair, I'm also gonna show you how you can do that in case you want to in two specific ways. One is going to be completely no code. The other one is actually a little bit of code so you can adjust the system prompt. Now, I would say this is actually a really decent website. So I'm very, very happy with the result right here. So I'm just gonna leave full screen. And here are two ways on how you can adjust the system prompt. 
A, you can now just talk to AI here and, and tell it to switch Sarah and Mike and make sure the voice itself is changed so that Sarah is an actual female voice while Mike is an actual male voice. And you can really do this in natural language by just typing it here. The alternative, and this is in case you want to explore a bit more about the code and see what happens in the backend, you can click here on the code side and there we go. It actually defined it in the constants. And as you can see here, we have two constants, one as the front desk and one as the dispatcher. And if you can read a little bit of JSON, you will probably also understand that because it's a very similar structure. You can see in this object, we have a name, a role, the voice name, the description, theme color, etc. So if you want to change that, I can basically also say, this is going to be Kore and Puck is basically going to be the voice name of Mike. So I can just switch them around and basically have different names for it. And also I have the instructions of what they're supposed to do. So you can adjust that based on your needs with your prompt engineering knowledge. So if you've already have a predefined prompt that you often use, you can also just drop it into here and use that prompt instead as the system prompt. Really, really cool. And once you've done it, you can basically just go to preview again and test the website right here. Really cool and very, very easy and straightforward. Now having this website is cool, but for now it's just in the builder. So how do we actually deploy that to a website? Or in other words, how can we make it available for the actual lead? And to do so, the easiest way of is by using the Google Cloud. And you can do that by clicking up here on this little rocket icon. And once here, you need to create a project. And this project needs to be on the Google Cloud, which means that A, you need to have billing set up on the Google Cloud and you need to have a project set up, which you can, by the way, do directly in the dropdown right here. So you can click on create project, which then allows you to name it. And then you have that available in your Google services. Now I already have one, so I'm gonna select demo project. You can see the towers here as well. And if I click here, you will see the services that I've deployed for it. Now to make sure I can actually show you the full experience, I'm gonna click here on deploy app, meaning that now I take this website that we just created and I actually turn it into a real website that the lead can access. And this usually takes only a few seconds if you set it up the first time, maybe a minute or so, but usually it's incredibly quick. And you can see as well the API key it uses. So this is the Gemini API key. And you can also see this app URL. And this is basically the live URL that you can now already use. So if I copy this to the clipboard and I drop it in my website, uh, in my URL, you can now see that I can access this on an actual website. So theoretically, you can already hand this out to your client and have them see this voice AI demo on this specific app. Now, anyways, because it's not directly branded with a brand name, it doesn't really matter. You can just send it out and it would look already okay if you don't care necessarily about the domain. However, you can also add a custom domain to it so that it's branded based on your specific brand. And my favorite part is, and that's what I've done prior as well, that I just create a subdomain for that specific client so that I can showcase them this website on a subdomain. So that in case they see it, they might even click on my main domain so they will find out more about my services basically the whole point behind having the custom domain in the first place. Now the question is, how do we do that? How do we actually add a custom domain to it? And it's very straightforward. All you do is you head back into your Google AI Studio. And once you have deployed it, all you're gonna do is click here on this opening Google Cloud, which now opens this project with a service in your Google Cloud. You can see that right here, it is deployed, it is up and running. Perfect. What we're gonna do now is on the side menu here, we click on domain mappings, and this is where we set up the custom domain. And you can see here, I've tried that already prior. We have two subdomains here already. One is for demo, one is for plumbers on my test domain, vinegar.ai. And last time I've shown you with an N8N scenario, how I have done it, which I also, by the way, link below in the description. And if you wanna learn more about how I did it with N8N, you can check out the reference video, which is also linked below in the description. But for now, we're gonna set it up using custom DNS so you really understand how you can do it with your own DNS or domain provider. Now, my domain is hosted or managed at least by a platform called, or a SaaS called Cloudflare, which pretty much runs a lot of the internet itself, if you know it or not. And it is basically a layer that you put between your domain provider and your actual website, so the server wherever your website is hosted. It's kind of a protective layer that makes sure not all the traffic goes through because it filters out malicious things, phishing traffic, etc. So it kind of protects your website in one extent and it allows you to customize rules and make sure you can manage DNS very easily. So this is what we're going to use. And, and obviously since we now created it for a company called Boston Budget Plumbing, I'm just gonna use the actual domain as the subdomain. So I just copy that from the URL. I head back into, into the Google Cloud and now here I'm gonna click on add mapping. And this is where I'm gonna add that. You can now see here, we're gonna want to use the Boston Budget Plumbing. I'm gonna select the domain I want to use. 
And here in the subdomain, I define bostonbudgetplumbing.vinegar.ai. So this is going to be the subdomain we are going to use to showcase that as a branded domain. Now I'm gonna click on continue and now it's requesting me to update DNS records. And these DNS records are basically the one we need to add to wherever our domain is managed. And it's only one here, you can see, it says Boston Budget Plumbing, we need to add it as a C name or this specific data value. And we do that by simply heading over to wherever your domain is hosted. You will most likely find a DNS section like this. I'm gonna go here to records and in here I click on add records and from the drop down here I select the C name in this name field, I'm gonna add the Boston Budget Plumbing. And in the value field, this is exactly where we add this ghs.googlehosted.com. Now, as you can see, there's a little dot at the end. In some cases it matters, usually not. I'm a big fan of just removing it because it's not necessary because it just determines whether or not you want to have it as a subdomain or as the end of a string. For us, it doesn't matter, so I'm gonna remove it. And I'm also gonna turn off proxy status, which is some feature that Cloudflare offers but it often makes it harder to verify domains. Now that said, I'm also gonna leave a comment and say voice AI demo for Boston Budget Plumbing, and I'm just gonna save that. And once that's saved, we are now able to go into here and basically click done. And now it takes a little bit of time until the website becomes available. And you can see that as well by just refreshing it. So I'm just gonna head over to overview and go back to mappings and you can see now it's loading it. And when you hover over the loader, you can also see that it says waiting for certificate provision. Meaning that now it basically checks A, whether or not we have set up the CNAME properly, which may take up to 48 hours depending on your caching of the website. So you gotta be a bit patient with this. If you mess something up there, it may take longer. If you do it the first time and you set it up properly and then you start adding the subdomain here, great, it's usually a lot quicker. I've seen that anywhere from maybe five minutes to an hour. This is probably a time frame that I would recommend you to keep in mind. But once that's deployed, it's going to be available on this subdomain. And because I don't have the patient and I don't wanna make you wait for seeing this, Simply imagine that once it is green, just like the other ones here, you will be able to use this as a URL to send it to the client. So what I would do is I would basically just open a page, I would just drop it in here, like you've seen it, and I would basically just take it as a URL and send that to the client. Now it's HTTP, so I would make this HTTPS because Google is issuing a certificate for you. So you can just copy this as a URL and send that one to that lead so that they can check out your voice AI demo. And this really is the whole magic behind it. Once you've done that, congratulations, you have a complete voice AI demo that you can showcase to leads, show them what voice AI actually is because most people still don't even understand that so that you can potentially close another client. Now, I really hope this was helpful until here. And if you're really deep into that and you are like us creating those demos and educating people in the space or just creating a whole agency on top of it, making sure you have a life of freedom, travel around, work from anywhere you want, or work just on your own terms. This is a really awesome way forward. This shaves so much time off of our plate of creating those custom demos, which is insane. Now we can provide this value in such a short amount of time, which is just a massive game changer. And I'm such a big fan of it because this allows us to create solutions that have never been there. And trying to stay at the forefront of voice AI is incredibly important for us because we built these solutions for Fortune 200 and publicly traded companies. So making sure that we can always stay on top and have the latest technology at our fingertips is incredibly crucial for making sure we can provide value. Because in the end, we are only in this game and we are only successful because we are building value-driven solutions, which is the rarity in the space, unfortunately. Unfortunately, but this is exactly the reason we created our educational program. So we can teach people how voice AI works and how they can leverage it for the better. So if you're interested, you're most welcome just joining our free community with a link in the description below and I'd love to see you over there. That said, what have you already built with a new Gemini 3 model? Feel free to drop it down below in the comments. I'm very happy reading through that. And that said, thank you very much for watching. And if there's anything specific you'd like to see next time, you're also welcome to just drop it below. And for everyone who's still watching, thank you the most. You stayed consistent and watched until the end, so I want to give you some extras that the other people will miss. Number one is that I've adjusted the template and switched the voices, so Sarah is actually female and Mike is male. Other people may miss that. And to make sure you can get some extra benefits and to make the video complete, you will also get access to an email template that you can send out to potential leads. So this is something that worked for us in the past and you can customize it based on your needs and the industry you're in. That's all, everything is in the description below and thank you very much for watching.